to order? Thanks. All right. Any changes to the agenda? Okay, here none. We'll deem it approved. Um, <clears throat> third item is comments from the chair. Uh, maybe I I could just turn this over to Kirby since he ran the last meeting. Oh. <laughs> um, I thank you for doing that and thanks everyone for moving forward without me. Um, you couldn't Kirby. figure out how to vote to adjourn. I know, I still didn't. Uh, That's my one chance to learn how to uh, how to do some process. I'll just get it. It's just oh. not a debatable motion. Like <laughs> um, it, uh, anything that you want to discuss from last meeting? Uh, well, it looks like we are going to discuss the substantive part from last meeting tonight, which is kind of we were planning for tonight a little bit mm -hmm. um, to talk about how we'd like to communicate with the committees and try to try to be leaders, I guess you could say, in organizing some of the work from the other committees in the city. Uh, so we'll be talking about that tonight. Um, so. Uh, we had some great comments about that last week. Uh, I gave a sort of stream of consciousness summary of the uh, regional energy plan, which is going to vote tomorrow. Uh, I believe by now I've sent a link to everyone on the commission with that. And for the public who's interested in the regional energy plan, you can go to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission website and find that plan and review it yourself as a member of the public. Uh, that's really it. Nothing new mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, and the only thing I'll say is we're going to keep plugging ahead with our new work on the new city plan, although we keep calling it master plan, you know, new agenda. I didn't catch it either, Mike, <laughs> until just now, and I realized. Okay, um, so can I, I don't know if this is the right moment, but I, let's I okay, moment. <laughs> I feel confused. So the city just updated or approved the master plan, and the city plan is something different? We have been using the term master plan for years in this city, oh. and the term master plan is typically used, I mean, as you know, in the Act 250 context as you're mapping out a development proposal. And so given that it's often used in that context, we want to avoid confusion, refer to it as a municipal plan or a city plan, and we settled on a city plan. Um, but this requires a big paradigm shift for everyone not only on the commission, but in the community. So that's why I keep trying to say city plan because we kind of try to refer to it by its name, which is a little bit more uh, it's clearer of what it's identifying. Do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> well, what, so what is, I guess I don't, yeah. The question what is, is the what, city plan? what are we doing here? Yeah, right? what is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What that's is that? another. <laughs> the city plan is the, the master plan for all of Oh, I think oh, your question just, is: We extended the old master plan. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. And till when? December? It, no, it's good for eight years. Oh well, we really got our money's worth. But we can uh, we, we tacked on some things at the end of the what five or six years that it was in existence. So the idea is we start and do new plan. Okay. And yeah. do we know how long that process will take, or even it's less than eight years, right? Yeah, yes. Less than eight years, or it'll take a number of years to probably get through it. Okay. I promised we'd have the zoning done by the time I got out of Afghanistan, and we failed. So we don't make any promises as to when things okay. will get done. No, that's good. I just wanted to get it. Yeah. Sorry, out. I didn't understand. No, that's that's fine. Yeah. Sometimes. If you were looking some other places, you'll see a discussion of a master plan, but usually that would usually relate to it like a downtown master plan or some type of almost like a it's site a plan. Physical it's a physical plan as oh. opposed to the, the city plan or the municipal plan, um, which has the required 10, 12 elements and all the pieces. Just talking about everything from education to community services to housing. Um, more of a comprehensive plan. Okay, I see. So we're trying to use that terminology. Okay. Yeah, yes. landscape architects and architects would be referring to a master plan 
in a completely different sense. And most communities don't call their city plans or town plans master plans. We just have, because on my shelf, I have master plans for the city of Montpelier that date back to 1965, 68. Yeah. So for whatever reason, whoever did it in the 60s called it a master plan, and everyone readopted it since then. Kept that. Well, we've been trying to use the term city plan for we've at least a year. We've been trying. It's, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but the public really knows it as the master plan, so. Yeah. But it's reality is not. Ones. I think there were elements of the master plan, which were sort of interesting, of turning this area into a mall and stuff Yeah, like there were that. more physical proposals that were in those plans, connecting streets across gridded street network through downtown. So, so yes, we're just trying to practice getting ourselves out of the habit of calling this the master plan update. It's the city plan update. That's what That's right. we will try. Yeah. And fail. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So that's it for comments from the chair. Um, General business comments from the public about something not on the agenda. We don't have any members of the public present. So we'll move on to number five, which is called item five is called master plan update discussion. We're going to amend that to city plan update discussion. Yes. And um, Mike, do you want to take it away? Um, yeah, I'll just I'll kick this off. So. Um, we had talked about housing being the first chapter. The housing task force meets this Thursday. So I'll be going to their meeting this Thursday night and talking to them about this and inviting some or more of them to the 26th for your commission meeting. So we can kind of have a joint meeting, um, talk about I guess with uh, the rest of these, which is a little bit of what our expectations are, are we going to provide a framework? Some of these we may not be able to answer completely tonight, but these are some of the things that we wanted to start to to talk about. Um, okay. So, so you want to walk through them one by one? Yeah. I mean, uh, so the expected framework. So I just printed out. I grabbed three different housing chapters and I didn't make a bunch of copies of each so we can pass some of them around if we need to. One was, you know, this one's Barry Cities, this one's South Burlington's, and this one's Middlebury. So I just tried to grab ones from different parts of the state because they're presumably written by different people. Maybe. Is there one that you prefer? Um, I don't know. I've, I kind of, I mean, a lot of this comes down to layout. There are certain requirements that we have to talk about in the housing element, um, but there's not a lot. We have to talk about, I think, a plan for affordable housing for low to moderate income persons, I think. Sounds about right. Um, but really, you can talk about anything related to housing. You just have to talk about that one piece. So, um, I really comes down to a lot of the, the plan is really to kind of tell a story or make a case or set the stage for what our plan is going to be going forward and so I don't know I thought there was a little bit that I thought that Middlebury did a nice job of laying out a little introduction piece then they talked about trends you know affordability sustainability character social interaction. It looks like they, they set out their plan to be laid out with some principles in mind. And then they kind of tied them back in and then got into their goals and policies and recommendations. I didn't read carefully all the goals and policies to see if it really made sense. But I mean, a lot of this is what we'll eventually want to get to provide to our committees. This is kind of how we plan to go. A little bit of it, though, is I mean, that's why we're doing one chapter. Yeah. Do one chapter, see where it goes, see how we, you know. But the idea is, or at least the idea that we were recommending and discussing last time was that this, what is going to be in the plan is going to be relatively short with potentially links to a lot of other documents that would really kind of um, 
not bury the public in data and a bunch of information, but really to kind of digest all that information down and maybe put the rest of that into an appendix. So the implementation steps would be in an appendix, essentially? It, it, we could separate those out as well into an appendix as well, that the specific implementation and really just talk about, you know, four or five pages of, of housing. What's your thought about using what you've already done that you worked on last year with? What that was with the housing task force. Yeah, that's that one is really not the final product. It's a good that's the piece that would be kind of linked. Because I don't think that's necessarily telling the public. That's really kind of explaining to somebody who might be a little bit of a policy wonk who wants to know why did we choose this policy really specifically. Because it really kind of goes in and says, this is why we have this written this way. Because this word's important, and this word's important, and this word's important. Oh, I guess I was thinking more in terms of the housing piece that you actually did that had the implementation steps involved. Oh, the implementation yeah. steps would definitely be in it. It, we would probably digest that into a table, form a table or something. I don't, I'm not sure how that would get formulated, but the written text part, I think what's in that table, we can always work on how to make that presented. But I think what we need out of the committees is to kind of work on the text part that would be up there. Yeah. It's I was just how thinking. to write it. The, hmm. the goals and policies, we'll, we'll agree that's the goal we like. And at some point, we just have to decide how to present it. So I think something that could be useful right now is if we walk through what parts of the analysis we think are important to be included in the housing chapter and with a view to how those would be important in other chapters. And Stephanie sent me and Kirby some helpful comments. Um, she was saying things that we, we might want the housing task force to consider could be a current conditions analysis, for example. We want them to take a look at what the housing availability is right now out there, um, just to kind of see what's out, what's available on the ground today. Um, then the goal setting, which is what you're just talking about. Um, well, you're talking more about the implementation of these goals, but first you have to identify the goals. So what do you want to see accomplished in the next 10 years is the framework that, I mean, the timeline that Stephanie offered, we could discuss that if, if folks think it should be eight years or however long. Um, the third piece that she recommended is capability assessment, meaning what resources or tools does Montpelier have that could be used to reach the goals? And finally, um, this is the implementation piece, what actions should the city take with existing resources uh, or in order to gain additional resources in order to meet these goals. I thought that was a great framework for what what the meat should be in a given chapter. But let's talk about it, because especially since oh, Mike's okay. going to their next meeting. <laughs> it sounds like they probably have a lot of this information. It's just may, might be floating, or maybe they just need help coming into a framework. Maybe they don't. Maybe they have it all planned out already. But if we have a thought on it, we should offer it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have a they have an idea. I think of what they want. I think the issue is just kind of getting it all put down, getting it all written out, and yeah. presented in such a way that um, it can be discussed and debated publicly. Because uh, they, as much as they have a lot of support. You know, they'd also get pushback on certain things that they want. So at mm -hmm. the same time, if they make a case for something, we, you know, it'll have the, the support behind it. And then if if the planning commission or city council decides to make some changes, we can obviously address those. But I think they just have to start to put those things down and put them into context and decide. You know, we've talked about uh, an inspection program, rental inspection program. You know. I know Housing Task Force has, and are they interested in saying that's going to be a goal that they want to follow up on, or is that one that they kind of, they kind of like the idea, but they really don't want to push it? That was my question that's for you, is, is it the goals that you're seeing as the piece where more, I mean, I mean, the, 
assessing current conditions should be straightforward. I don't think anyone's going to really debate on that. There might be some members of the public who could help correct or provide history where needed. But that should be pretty straightforward. Um, the capability assessment, what tools we have, that should be fairly straightforward, right? So then the, the two things where it could be trickier is goal setting and implementation of those goals but we could at least get some of the pieces put together so current conditions should at least partially be set in the existing city plan right we worked quite a few of those statistics anyway yeah I mean we have a lot of statistics so the, usually the, the bigger question provided. come in yeah the bigger questions for some of these is how much of this do we really want to talk about like we were coming up with just five or six pages that we want to talk about for housing how much do we really want to talk about um, current conditions because we could have current conditions I could put five pages of census data on housing we've got just yeah just oodles I think and oodles. a summary think on that with to. the appendices that you discussed would make sense yeah I think we just have to pick out what are going to be the important ones based on our goals so mm -hmm. I usually work a little bit backwards from okay. the goals back to conditions because you really again come back to this telling the story we're, we're going to tell the pieces of information that are important to explaining the story or the position or the, the plan that we have i think that works as long as I mean, we don't have to write up the current conditions before we set figure out the goals but i think there needs to be a form of understanding com of compile what, them somewhere in an appendix you have to understand them yeah, yeah because the, otherwise the goals don't have any context yeah. Is, is really most of the data context. from the 2000 census? The 2010. 2010. Yeah. So what do you folks think about, because I feel like it'd be helpful if we give them more yeah. uh, narrow, more specific sort of a box to work with them. And if we, um, if we can set something up so that anything that's being written is sort of classified um, you know, tagged under sort of an accepted framework, like maybe you know, there's a goal and it, it can have one goal and it's, this is an example of the components of the goal and then there may be some measurable objectives, like how do we know if we've met that goal? And then you have, you know, strategies, policies, or actions that link to those. And then behind those, you should have the information or data supporting it. And if we have them, essentially write this in a way that all of these are classified in a way, in a certain way with the same tags and the same schema, then what we can do is afterwards is create a, a plan that's sort of digital and interactive very easily um, so that you can then sort by, you know, either committee, program, or project that this is assigned to or topic area, if that's what you're interested in, or, you know, what's on this year's objectives or targets. So you, you have the, the information in one place, but then you can provide different views on it. It seems to me if we follow the rule, um, we're going to use existing water and sewer. The number of places in the housing is pretty small. Five years of work is trying to identify those places and change zones so that more housing can be built. And just coming through the dairy thing, they're concerned with oh, deteriorating oh, housing and just by Needing, um, needing better enforcement of housing codes and public safety standards. And I think we do need to maintain the quality of what we have here. If the opportunity of building many new houses is small, um, at least that's my anecdotal view of what that's going so one of the goals is to keep it within the... Yeah, and that's a money issue, of course. That, that's an enforcement issue. And 
quite a bit. There's very little data. Um, uh, I'd be surprised if there's much data on maintenance and rental quality. I mean, it's really a market factor. If you look at since our rents are, are comparatively high, I imagine places are well preserved. Not all of them. So, well, so I, but the, the, that's what I would want. Yeah. Are people getting fear dog for their money? So I'm interested in pursuing this discussion, but I'm, I want to make sure that we have our sort of process framework suggestions for them first before we get into the substantive. Oh, and this, okay. is, this is where we're treading right now. Sorry, but it I, is, it, no, and it's a great I, point. I was thinking of data collection. But it sounds like they've already done a lot of that. Would you say, Mike? If it's from 2010, it's fairly common. Yeah, it depends on the. I mean, there's some data that we have that's that's um, fairly even more up to date than that. We can get some realtor data um, because some things really kind of fluctuate with time pretty quickly. Uh, number of days on the market, or actually months supply is the one that realtors use more you know, how much supply is on the market because that drives whether you know, if you're less than six months then prices tend to rise if it's more than six months then prices tend to drop so it's a, well it sounds like we'll have to re if this is going to be our initial chapter to send out to the other committees as an example and it is the most likely to change We'll have to revisit it at the end of the process. Yeah, they're, they're all going to change. We'll probably have to revisit them in the end. I mean, economic development is another one. Unless we started with natural resources, would be probably the most static mm -hmm. factor. Okay. Um, but I think a lot of them would change. But um, a lot of the policies that go in, and I think, you know, I like where John was going with, with his thought of, you know, trying to set up a framework. Because I think. I do think a digital plan is the thing of the future. I mean, it really isn't going to be the paper plans, even though that's still kind of the requirement we have under state laws to produce this paper plan. That I think a plan that's on interactive on the web is going to really be something. If we can start making some steps in that direction, I think that's that's kind of you know, as you said, searchable where you can you know, you've got everything there. And you search by box and you can then bring up what's all in the energy plan, what's all in 2015 or 2018, what's in... Um, how does that touch on other areas? Yeah, how too? does that, that affect that other... That interactivity would be really useful for us. So how do we, how do, we do that? I think that's starting at the end and working to the forward. Mm -hmm. and instead of starting, you know, most of these plans, when we write these plans to planners, we start at the front and write front work our way the last thing we work on is the implementation plan and i think it's a little bit of where john it sounded like he was going a little bit of the same place i was going last year which is really kind of let's start with the goals policies and recommendations find out where we want to go and then write the narrative part that supports the plan the implementation plan that kind of lays the groundwork for the implementation plan kind of working backwards but if you have a pretty good idea of what the goals are, then that's really a good way yeah. to do it. And yeah, I think the Housing good. Committee already has the goals. I think that yeah. document I provided last time with the goals, policies, and recommendations, I think the goals are there. That was our first shoe through the process. I think we have more refinement we need to do with that and more discussions and go to the public and get more input mm -hmm. and work on some of those details a little bit more because we really didn't work a lot on the details. But I think some of the big goals and the vision pieces are where they're probably going to be heading. The only question I had for them that I found was that we really didn't have a good goal on affordability, which is one of the ones that was probably the most important element. But, um, Kirby, what are the outlying towns saying about population those towns? Is it growing, <coughs> stagnant? I mean, if we build a lot of houses, just theoretically, where are the people going to come from? Um, 
I don't I don't know a lot as far as data on that. I do know that there is I mean, there's some growth in the towns around us and I know anecdotally that because I know a lot of people who live in towns around us who want to live in Montpelier and they tried and failed or are either renting or buying or uh, so I, I know that I know enough people where that's just like a commonly that's just a very common area yeah, here right this, now in this yeah. region. Uh, so people are going to communities nearby because there is housing available there, uh, and it's just that's just because my people really in an extreme position and that we have close to zero percent. Um, what's the vacancy. measure for vacancy rates for rental? Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a complete seller's market. We've also seen an, an increase in uh, meters to the essentially Burlington area and <coughs> pricing where housing has gotten. Could you speak up a little bit? We've seen an increase in commuters to the Burlington area as housing prices over there have increased fairly dramatically from 2000 to 2010. So the um, population growth has sort of pushed out to that 35 minute drive area and even a little bit beyond when you look at even places around St. Albany, it's like Fairfield or Fairfax, they are seeing population growth as a result of housing prices in Burlington. We're seeing a little bit of that in Montpelier as well. So what do we do with that? We, we increase we have to yeah. increase the supply of housing. Yeah, that's right. And especially housing that's walkable to downtown so that people can just not just bring more people into the town. I mean a lot of the, the statistics pieces are just to understand the the situation. A good example I can give is um, when I was working in Lamoille County. Um, everybody that lived in Morrisville worked in Waterbury. Everybody who worked in Morrisville, which was a job center, Morrisville was both a bedroom community and a job center. And it gotta be, takes talent to do that. So they actually had, you know, like 80% of the people who lived in Morrisville left to go somewhere else to go to work. And there was more jobs and there were people in Morrisville. So everyone from Johnson and Wolcott and everywhere came into Morrisville. So it's kind of this weird eight o'clock, everybody flushes out and everybody flows in at 4 30 everybody goes out and everybody comes back and it was this weird dynamic because the people who lived there couldn't people lived there because they couldn't afford to live in Waterbury. but that drove up the housing prices prices in morrisville such that people who worked in morrisville couldn't actually afford to live there so they lived in wolcott and eden and surrounding communities so you end up with this weird but it's helpful from the planning commission and the planning standpoint to understand that about your community and i think mm -hmm. that's a little bit of understanding our housing situation helps us realize that it's not just our housing situation we're being affected by chittenden county so certain things we're not going to be able to fix we can't change we can't make them build more housing <laughs> to help lower the pressure here but at the same time we're increasing our housing stock we have added a lot of housing over the past 50 years but at the exact same time, we've also, you know, our housing household size went from three to two. So just to keep the same population, we had to have a 50% increase in housing. So you know, we're basically 2.0 right now. So as we add housing units, we just get smaller households. But that also gives us a housing stock of large houses predominantly filled by much smaller families. So. That's why the housing task force has tried to come up with new policies and programs to say, how can we take these larger houses and be able to do these infill, that's why, you know, doing these duplexes, can we take this, you know, we're not really adding a second house, you know, trying to explain to the people when we were doing the master plan and doing the zoning, we're not actually looking to add another house when we say we're going to add another dwelling. We're simply going to take that existing house and subdivide it internally into two units because it was a house that was built for a family of six that now has a family of two. Yeah, it so, won't have any more people living there than it did previously. Yeah, it's got the same number of people, it's just gonna be two units in that increase in density. But, um, and I think we've allowed it, the new zoning will do a lot to enable more housing. And now it's up to the housing task force to kind of come up with ways of 
how do we facilitate it? How do we help property owners who have a big house to subdivide, you know, to make that happen? How do they learn how to be landlords? Because, you know, if somebody doesn't need to, they might just say it's not worth the hassle. So I think that's that's the trick for the housing committee is to come up with a strategy to and that comes back to your comment before, which is we have limited areas where we have to build it. Mm -hmm. So how do we? So that sounds like a lot of technical knowledge that would be required. Both contractors have to do it, and legal. How do you get the buggers out if they don't pay? And other things of that sort that have to be available for people. To do. So does. Housing Task Force have a list of goals of, of that nature now? Um, yeah, I think I, I handed yeah, it out last time. Oh, I just got um, my copy so I just passed around. And that was mm -hmm. this, and this we had some last time. So I remember we had yes, the sir. discussion. Oh, this increase is increase housing okay. development until, well, that was the goal. That's why uh, I The aspiration this one. was Montpelier will have a healthy housing market that provides an adequate supply of housing to, in a mix of housing type sizes and occupancy. The goal: How are we how are we going to get housing development to have a five percent vacancies in the rental market? And so, looking at developing an infrastructure incentive program that's to help people be able to extend the utilities to these units. Because a lot of times, it's just we're trying to get the costs down for the developer. So if it costs a developer two hundred eighty thousand dollars to develop the unit, but they can't make enough rent to pay the mortgage, if we can get that down to two fifty. Then we might be able to get them into their into their range where the economic market works for them. So, um, so that was just a list of tools. Now the question for the housing committee is, how many of those do we want to pursue? What's our priority? We just started putting ones out there. Okay. I are there others that we missed them. that we? Yeah. yeah are, there, are there other programs that we missed that we should be considering and putting on that list? And there's some elements that then could be taken off now potentially. Yeah, some of those we've already done with the with the zoning. Um, the sprinkler stuff, there was this, the comment in there that said we should have a, uh, remove the sprinkler requirements. Um, so you are using that format at least as a talking point? That yeah, would be the start. The I would, I was my assumption say, was yeah. I think that's where Yeah. Okay, if, that if we started to work on something like that, then we've got something that's kind of can be replicated or can be built on something we can put into a Excel type database. That would be Excel, but Person, but some kind of database that would then let you be matrix. able to manipulate within a matrix of different fields. Yeah. I want to know all of the ones that are already being done because some of these that are described in there um, are talking about continuing to do something. Well, that's not something new. If, we're, if, we, well, if the goal of the program in there says we should just keep doing what we're doing with this program, well, that's not something new. We just have to recognize that we're doing. What are all the new things that we plan to do this year? So we would, can search that. Would it be helpful then to, I'm trying to put John's um, suggestion into, into practice then, to, to, to think of this in terms of uh, starting with the goals maybe and, and breaking out based on future action, maintaining those categories we talked about before and, and having committees kind of divide things up that way for us? I think, uh, or something else. Yeah, well, no, I think figuring out, like, for we have goals, objectives, strategies, or actions, what are the different attributes that we want to know about those actions? So, you know, are they part of a, what project or program is, is going to sort of implement those? When will it happen? How will we know when? get there so is it measurable is it something that we're maintaining evolving or transforming about not failure I think in and of itself could be one so that you could then see what are we across the town we're proposing to keep doing what are we changing um, how much will it this cost is there any data supporting it or do we have any estimates on cost so then you could then sort by uh, in terms of dollar Priority. Would you have imp uh, implementation over time? I mean, have have goals that are part of the way through the process. In other words, intermediate goals um, in order.
or to sort of set targets or just say that in the course of this eight years we're going to get from point A to point B? Depends on the goal. Yeah, well, okay, I think but some of them would have more immediate. Right, goals. and some of them will, may also be limited by data availability. So, you know, we're going to have the 2020 census coming up. That's in 2021. We're going to have a whole bunch of data coming at us. So, it wouldn't make sense to say we're going to, you know, get use 2019 or 2021 estimates or. I would say there should be some flexibility on benchmarks, but just having so that when people write things out, they're thinking, well, what is this? Is this a policy? Is it a strategy? And then once it's in a box, then you can ask some of those other questions. And once we have them all, it becomes a lot much easier to bring things together and then present a plan that people can read and understand. So the first question is, is this a policy project? You had a few different things. It was the project program. Yeah, I've got this. What yeah, was the other one? So it's the first Permits, question. programs, Project. projects, plans, policies. And I just threw out yeah. random. Yeah, we that's can, what we can talk through yeah, talk That's what we talked about before. Yeah. So, so that would be like an, an action type or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as as like one the kind of data field for. for did, did I go over the the we put together a hypothetical discussion one that I went over. Yeah. Like oh, the, it was a city with maybe a year and a half. Cities. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. For to have a goal of city full of butterflies. Unicorns and rainbows. And so we went through and kind of laid out, right. you know, because it would lay out in a in a structure how you would go through and say, well, maintain, enhance, transform. What are we trying to do with butterflies? We're trying to maintain the butterfly population. We're trying to enhance the number of rainbows. We're going to be transformative and introduce unicorns. It was meant to be just a way of having the conversation. But it does lay out the pieces of how you talk about each one of the steps. How do you talk about a goal? How do you talk about the policies and those pieces? And then how do you? So, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to bring together our different ideas about what we're trying to do right now. And that's okay. So that's a framework we talked about that exists that we can use as a template of some kind to bring technology into it more. It just sounds like it's it's not any a change in what the information we're providing, but it's a change in how we end up displaying the information down the road. Is that an accurate description of, of the way to, to use technology more? Or like or should we be gathering a like a different data set or a group of information right now to plan for that? I think it could be a little bit of both. I mean if something it's helpful to know what you're working towards if we want to have a consistent Format and to make our lives easier, and if we're going to do it, let's do it once instead of writing it and then trying to fit that into something else. So, I mean, um, up there has uh, G Suite for doing. Uh, you have Google Drive set up. I would assume so. I've used it in committee. I don't know if it's set up. I'm just wondering, maybe there's a folder, a plan folder for all the committees to be working off of document one quotes. And they could even be visible. I mean, you could set the settings that they're visible from anyone in the public so that it's a transparent process. But everyone's sort of working off of one copy and a template that's the same everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think what I'm hearing is in order for what we do now to translate into being something that's easy to use in the these technology tools we have available, we need to make sure that we're doing it in a way that it's consistent from day one. So when we're setting goals, we have to identify what are the various drop-down menus, so to speak. So one could be, this: is this goal to maintain enhance or transform or use evolve. So 
So whatever terms we're going to use, let's use the same ones every time, and whatever you're most familiar with and prefer, I think we just use those. Um, then the second question is, is this policy or program or uh, would it be a regulatory mechanism? I mean, that, that set yeah. of questions yeah, would be things. another one. Yeah. So figuring out what are these various differentiating pieces, figure out the terms we're going to use and using them across the board will enable the tags that we place on them to be cross relevant. So if you want to see every uh, regular every goal that implicates a regulatory change, you can click something and see them all together. That's what you're envisioning. Right. And and I think these whatever we're asking, there needs to be a purpose for it, right? We shouldn't just ask for something because it sounds nice. So it, it should have like a function which then leads to writing something that's useful, right? If you're writing you know you have to write something in order to either classify it for whatever reason or answer that question. And there's a reason for that you can't write something that's pretty useful. Yeah, it starts to force you it doesn't let you be lazy, it forces you into a direction. Which is a little bit why we did that whole structure that we did. Was to start to force that you know, that is this continuing, is this something new? Once we've got into this, you know, once you say you're gonna do a regulation, now you have to answer one of these questions. It's gotta be you're either encouraging something or you're requiring something, but you can't, you know, so it starts to force you into this thing. Why are, what are we gonna do with this regulation? We're gonna use this regulation to require solar panels on houses. Yeah. Or are we gonna something that provides a density bonus so we can encourage solar panels on houses. Um, you know, we've got to have that kind of discussion and by having it within the box it starts to force you into not just saying you know the zoning should discuss or have regulations about solar panels. It's not really helpful when we get to write the zone we want to provide direction. But if it's all on the table then Working on zoning, we can simply query everything that's a zoning policy and get it done with data. So, so how something like that work, John? Is it if you had it in a say a Google document as a matrix or something, then and you went to uh, search for some particular item, would you be since if Google is searchable, would it be able to top up all of the things that? say, had regulations attached to them? Yeah, I mean, ideally, afterwards, we basically just create an interface that's a lot more user-friendly, so you aren't, in, we don't want to send people to a spreadsheet or a table. Um, we want people not to read something. It's probably a good way to do it. But uh, you should be able just to search by word or you know, drop down or different views or tabs. Or there's lots of different ways to do this. We can also just link it to different maps as well. Well, would the committees have to do it first in an Excel document or something like that? Or? That would probably be the easiest. I was just thinking, I don't even access database. Or, or am I dating myself by different <laughs> <laughs> access databases now? No, access databases are still around, but I think a lot of people are uh, either comfortable with uh, Google Sheets or Excel. And then you, from that, as long as they don't get destroyed, uh, the integrity of them can sometimes get scrambled. Uh, you can then migrate it to uh, a more secure database. And that, but it could be interactive in terms of the committee could be working on one document the whole time within Google Docs or something, but that doesn't mean that other committees are going to be able to input to that. Particular document script. Unless you want to. Uh, no. <laughs> no, probably not. I think not. Probably, probably good idea is to have just a chair or somewhere to talk to the board so, so that we don't have too many cooks in the kitchen. Then. But that's probably a better way to do it. You could see, but yeah, I think some committees would probably want to have yeah. a little more inner. Yeah, some It, it may not work for everyone either. I feel like you can't always enforce it. So, but. but it's good to have an open process. Yeah. I mean, the more open the process we can make it, I think, is, is the hope that more people 
who have an interest in commenting, you can get their input, you can get their thoughts. Well, I like the idea of having the working documents available uh, online, at least viewable to the public. Not everyone should be able to edit them. So, yeah. We won't have a Wikipedia situation, but just the least, you know, the committee working on it would have editing availability and then everyone else would have viewing capability. Potential for comments, too. Then, if the public was going to view it, could the public offer? Comments that would go to the I mean, that's a public comment on anything at any to. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah There's I nothing. Know. I mean, but it, having them write them down is really helpful. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that brings us to the next B here. Um, what process should we expect the committees to use? And I have some notes from Stephanie here where. Her thoughts are that each committee should be responsible for at least some form of outreach on their chapter, like a, a kickoff or a visioning meeting. And then at the, at the planning commission level, we would review the visioning from the last plan. Uh, I guess she's talking about the last master plan and have some public discussion to make sure it's still accurate. So I think she's, she's talking about a separate outreach process there. But as far as the committee's outreach and public input, I mean, I think they should come to an initial recommendation of goals and then have some sort of outreach to the public to see if those goals align with what the community is interested in achieving. I think it's important to, to address that expectation now as well, to, so to include that in our communication right now. Then our, so we would actually say that each committee would have their own outreach meeting, potentially. Yeah, I think that they could choose the way they want to do it, but it seems like it would be important to get feedback on the goals at that level so that they would have control over adjusting the goals based on that feedback before it came to us, rather than it, you know, the public coming out against whatever the housing task force said without them having a chance to kind of think about it. And you can never predict what the public will do. I mean, they may not care at the first step and the exact same thing gets proposed a year later by the planning commission. Oh, yeah. Right? But at least works. if there's, at least if we've gone out and, and the committees have gone out and kind of made, you know, made a presentation and rolled out some proposals, these are our plans, these are our goals, this is how we plan to accomplish it, this is what we're going to present to the planning commission and if the public has comments. provided the opportunity to adjust it at that point it's going to come from the planning commission so we can get pulled together and present it again. So that might be something that would be coordinated through your office then? Yeah, I would probably, with whoever the staff is, we would have to be working with them. When we're working on the plan, we'd have to be working with them with an idea of, you know, the, the, the energy committee would have to be having the conversation, all right, we're going to work on the energy plan, we're focusing on goals, policies, recommendations, we're going to start there work our way back to the written text part when we've got some draft goals either go out with no goals and try to go to the public I usually think that's a bad idea usually I like to get some ideas for people to chew on give it to the public if they don't like it then then we can go back if they think we're going in the right direction refine this you know this is too far this isn't going far enough then we can refine it one concern I have is often the only members of the public that come out are the ones who are opposed. So we don't always get an accurate representation of what the broader community wants. I don't know if anyone has ideas about how we can reach more members of the public, but that's something I've been calling on that a lot. Is there any budget for food or anything like that at this meeting? Yeah. That's a, we, can, we can do, I mean, if we can find things at work and it was something like, Boy, if we could buy three or four pizzas, we could, you know, make these things work. I think we would find in our budget the money for, you know, a couple hundred dollars for stuff like that to, to cover those kinds of expenses. If it's bringing people out, then yeah, we'll some, do it. Okay. Um, I think it's just a matter of finding what what is the piece. And I think at different times and different topics, it's going to change. I think the approach. 
housing was drawn out by different kinds. Um, you know, as we talk about community services, and we get to those chapters, you know, just going directly to the senior center and these erect facilities, and you know, kind of doing direct outreach would kind of work best. going to where people are who would never come to a meeting. We've gone to the farmer's market, but we go to shops or other places in town. Where we tried a various mix of that with the energy committee, and you know, that's sort of a fair uh, response. But I think, you know, in terms of for elements that are concerning to, to elders, then I think going to the senior center makes a lot of sense. And the, um, when the last master plan, the actual master plan was done, there was a meeting up at the Mount College. That, did you like, I don't know if you were there. There, was a, there were probably 600 people up there at various times. And it was sort of a general kind of, you know, they, they set out the goals and um, in, on all of the areas and you know, kind of voted, you know, the, the sticky buttons and all of that. How did they get attracted to the meeting? Is it, yeah. it was, um, I think that there was some build up in terms of talking about it. And so people were in the newspaper or whatever, there was a lot of energy beforehand. And from what I remember is we just found out about it and, and uh, showed up. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, I think it should not just be one event, that it should be you know, seven. Yeah, I think they also events. had like six or seven discs. Project. Did they really? Yeah. Oh, there was right. a lot of. There was a lot Can of, we have just one, Mike? Just one? We have none. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, so, yeah, we've got. Uh, so, I mean, it. That that process was a, was a big process, and they did a lot to get people out. Um, I think we're going to try to use a lot of the, the goals, policies, and recommendations out of that plan. I mean, because I, I don't think they're necessarily that far off. I think it just wasn't a strategic, necessarily a strategic plan. Um, when you simply ask people, what do you think is the most important thing for us? What's the most important goal is important. Asking people to tell you what is the way you should implement that goal is different. That really takes more of a nuanced discussion and talking to people who know, who know how to do it. If we can do that for the next hundred years, it's not going to affect how these are the things that affect housing price. When it's all about stickies, it says, what do you think we should do about housing? You might not be picking the most effective tool um, because it's, you know, we need to be talking to people who know how to implement those. Well, it seems like we need to get agreement on goals first. And I think that was, I think that was the little Jones thing is yeah. we started with that end point, let those committees come up with a recommendation for goals, policies, recommendations go out to the public, get that. Even if they don't write necessarily write the, that start time now, we can save that till the end when we have all of the implementation pieces done. Because we'd really be down to writing 12 chapters, kind of introductory chapters for each goal. But once we agree on what our goals are, I think it's going to kind of lay out what we're telling people in your introduction to housing, this is what's important about housing. These are our goals, policies, and recommendations. Um, and I don't know. I think I think it would I think it would kind of tell itself. You'll know what you're going to write based on what our goals are. So it becomes more of an executive summary at that point, really talking about the overall approach. Yeah, yeah. approach and justification and why it's important. We're going to talk about why it's important because it's going to end up being your goal. If we, if we start with the goals, trying to kind of connect that, the outreach, that approach, the things, the outreach ideas, uh, maybe we can think about as we develop the goals and we have a draft, maybe publish that in some way to get feedback on. So that you're not at people in the back here. I mean, you saw housing, they actually put them out there. I mean, and that way we're also not we're not being too reactive like we kind of already know what we think the priorities are so we start working on that 
it did incorporate outreach. So that's kind of like it still would still be early on in the process and goals of the person we're doing. You get feedback at that early stage as to whether or not those are the most appropriate goals for from the, the public. public. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to build everything off the goals, and we should probably do those anyway. Because I feel like goals is the most appropriate thing to get feedback from, because maybe not everyone's experts in everything, but they at least will have some opinions on the goal side of it, yeah. but not the weeds. So that, that would be maybe the most appropriate place to get people to go. Just have a place, because people naturally will come up with solutions or things in there, and have a place to keep all of those. Yeah. Things. These are the ideas we'll talk about. That's a great idea. We'll talk about that as a way of implementing the goals. And allowing the public to have input as well. Yeah, I mean, they still, they, we still have to present at some point what our recommended approach is, but we at least would have an educated and informed decision on the If this is your goal, we looked at 10 different options for implementing that goal. Yeah. We found these four are appropriate. Then go to the public and say these are the four we think we're going to recommend. We could do any one of these four. Are there ones that you guys like better, or would absolutely not want to go for? Yeah, I think if if we can split apart the goals and the implementation piece, you're going to have more of a productive conversation. Yeah, and that and that's the goal is to eventually reach that end point where we've got a a strategic plan. That was our goal. Process would lead us. How are we going to measure it? How do you measure being strategic? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, for for me, wearing my my planning hat, at least having tasks that we can start to be able to check off mm -hmm. that goes and says these are ones that have been done, um, as opposed to having policies of encouraging affordable housing or encouraging accessory apartments. How many? And how many of them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least we've got policies that we can look back on. Ultimately, the hope is that we've got goals that are are somewhat uh, aspirations that are that are clear that we can kind of have an understanding of. And I think we we're going to try as best we can to attach benchmarks. Some things we can put benchmarks on. I think some just have to put a benchmark on safe housing. Housing. What's a safe house? You could, you know. I mean, it's a difficult thing. You could to have, you know, the, this number of houses will be used for inspection or something like that for the safety inspection. So there are some measurable barriers you could do. But maybe a sprinkler. Sprinklers? Yeah, we could say. <laughs> Got that one answered. No, it's smoke detectors, actually. Uh, yeah. You could have somebody inspect so, like when the housing task force comes in next week, are we going to give them, I mean, we have those four points that Stephanie came up with that sound good. Do we just give them that, or do we want to give them something more like a template to put this into, and then say, I, I guess I'm just not yeah. quite sure. I, I would be interested in trying to get a template going. Okay. Mike's going to write a template. I mean, some of that, that format kind of fits itself into a template anyway. But can I take a look at this? Yeah, there's a little bit of that that kind of fits into that, that template format. We think we just have to find a way of, of I thought you, categorizing it. Yeah. I thought you have a model. We do. This, this was actually written. We had the one that was the hypothetical, which was you know the, the butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns. But this was actually written using that format. So if you were to look at that, um, mm -hmm. you know, maintain the city's commitment to affirmatively further fair housing and bring attention to the city council in any area where the city is not fully, not fully meeting its obligations. So as a goal, it was required to say you're either going to maintain and enhance or transform. Mm -hmm. And so that one's going to maintain because we do already have a policy on that. Mm -hmm. So, I think you know there's certain ones that it was designed to, to meet that. That one is, is 
doesn't have as many goals because it doesn't have the programs and policies. But it was already kind of written in that format. Just I think we would need to figure out how to assemble that in an online way so we can start to make it more interactive and be able to populate it and then the committees can start populating their, yeah. their fields. So for example, so goal A, so the aspiration first is aspiration A, Montpelier will have a healthy housing market that provides an adequate supply of housing and a mix of types, sizes, and occupancy. And then there's a variety of goals associated with that aspiration. So goal A is increased housing development until 5% vacancies is achieved in the rental market. So that's good. We can measure that. Um, benchmark, that's what it's saying. Target 5% rental vacancies by 2025. Uh, benchmark, net increase of 150 housing units in five years, and if necessary to achieve benchmark, 20, 240 units by 2025. And then there's strategies. And here's where I think there's an opportunity to further uh, identify these strategies by what, uh, whether it's a program or regulatory change or, and that's what this, all of the green is. It's, so the strategies are to develop uh, a program or amend a tax stabilization program or conduct a study so I think that it's it's already yeah it's already in laying great itself shape. out yeah. for the green ones I think were new I think the greens were all the news um, okay. and the other ones were to continue um, yeah and there was continue amend and new so for the for the program pieces you were either going to continue to do it you were going to amend it because sometimes we would have a program that just needed to be adjusted um, and then. In some cases, we needed something to be new. So maybe we could give it tags like that now at this point? Yeah. And just we, say continue program or continue whatever. We just yep. continue new program. Or yeah. Or new program. So there's two categories there. There's a, whether it's a program project or whatever, and then whether it's new, amended, or And it was a little bit wonky, and it feels a little funny, but when you start to get into it, you realize it, start, it had started to force you into boxes that help to help you to organize your thinking. And I think it is easy to tag those. Um, and so I, I, how that works, because I'm not, as I said, I'm not a computer person, um, how that would actually work, I don't know, but it would be easy to tag those because that was already laid out in that with the framework mm -hmm. in, in a set of rules that said this is how you write goals. If you want to have a whatever keyword you, you think would make sense, we can make a, a program recognize. Does that sound reasonable? So whatever tag, I mean, you can choose the tag. The tag could be unicorns and puppies. You can change the tags. <laughs> but I mean, I think that being, cons you know, picking a consistent tag and, and putting it on the, the drafts now is going to make it much easier later down the road. That's the point I was getting from what you're proposing. Please jump in. Yeah, and mo moving in that direction and realizing it's okay if it's not perfect now. And we can fix things and you know, we don't need to worry a whole lot about the technology either necessarily, even if it continues to be in a Word doc as long as people are answering those questions in a semi-structured way, then we can move into something else afterwards. Mm -hmm. you know, so, mm -hmm. Could we even then, I mean, we could certainly um, highlight each one of these as a tag, but then have other tags so that the, that we could um, read between the different committee reports. For example, energy talks about housing, and so if energy and housing, could that, you know, then link to something in the housing section? So, because we were talking before about how much interconnection there's going to be between yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that draft talks about that in a number of places where it talks about having, you know, whether it's neighborhoods and it references, you know, ha having neighborhoods that are um, connected so, you know, uh, the housing plan supports the complete streets network. Yeah. Or having 
neighborhoods that are <coughs> close to recreation areas, um, you know, has these and those benefits. So the housing plan supports the parks and recreation plan for open space um, and their policy of having uh, a park within certain distance. certain distance that they have from every neighborhood. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's already in there, and I think that can certainly be built on, you know, the energy plan. Having an affordable, um, having energy efficient houses are, make housing more affordable because utility costs are part of the factor that's used to calculate how something is affordable. So. so we have targets in terms of how many houses would have been weatherized by yep. a certain And the housing committee <laughs> supports your efforts on the energy committee to do that because that is helping us on the housing committee accomplish our goal of having more affordable housing because we can save people a thousand dollars a year on heating costs. That's a thousand dollars more affordable than this housing unit has become. Okay. So then, part C. Says we should have a message of support and explain the commission's role. Committees will provide a proposed plan for their element that the commission reserves right to amend the balance of the other chapters in the bill. So how do we express that in a way that's supportive? Um, and I'll, I guess I'll just kick off by conveying Stephanie's comments since she sent them in. Um, she notes that different committees will probably want different levels of involvement from the planning commission while they're working on their chapters. So her suggestion is to give them options of, um, of how we might be involved with the caveat that since we do have to review and support their work, we maybe move them to have us involved in at least some way before they have a final chapter. Um, so some of these options are, one, to invite someone from the commission to participate in the meetings who can be the liaison. Uh, two, request to be on the agenda of the planning commission meeting and involve the full planning commission as part of the planning process. Or three, submit working sections of the chapters of your chapter for the planning commission to review and provide comment on throughout. So I guess it's going to depend on what stage they're in and what they might want. So you'll be fine to give them options like that. Yeah. <coughs> also, to talk about maybe. Some of our goals and you know, wanting a shorter plan that's usable, strategic, and that our you know we appreciate all the work they're doing. And part of what we'll we want to or need to do is to uh, be critical to a certain extent, or um, you know, push back, or if they do get this criticism, push back from that. They shouldn't think of it. It's, kind of attack is that you know, we should be working on this together and uh, that they can, it's coming from a place of love. <laughs> it's it's a of I'm okay. thinking of it in terms of when you are responsible for a bigger plan and somebody else is responsible for a tiny chapter, it's easy for each committee to put forward a lot of goals and we're going to have to be, we're going to have to help push people to push these committees to identify the really key goals and having in mind that we have all these chapters to do. I think one role we're going to have is in defining the current state of things. We talked about how we would like that to be succinct in the, in the city plan in the end. I think it sounds like maybe at the outset we're going to get maybe lengthy descriptions of these things and that what part of our um, contribution will be to pare it down maybe. And I think some of these, like like the document, like that document right there, can be one that could end up just as a as a white paper that you just eventually end up on the web as an extra piece of information that would be used to build the plan later. And I think there are a number of those, especially if you see the first part of that, the rationale for why these are our aspirations, four or five pages, real detailed description of why this is our well, that's not really going to be in the plan, but it, we, it certainly has the time in the development and we can put that in white paper. If, we, if we're building this on a web, we can just web link so many things. If somebody really wants to know, they can be able to 
dive down in as deep as they want to go into some of these topics. Yeah, I mean, could those aspirations be part of the uh, of appendix, that kind of thing that's directly linked to the plan? Because that helps to explain why the terms are not coming. That kind of thing. I just don't want the pieces to get too separated from each other. Yeah, I mean, certainly if we, they can all be brought together into a single... Linkable document. Yeah, a single linkable document, or you, know, you want to make that into a large... 50 page white paper on the energy plan that gets stuck in back because it's all put together and assembled nicely. I just don't have a lot of the time to do all the pieces to put together all the white papers, but we end up with 10 chips. Does, does each committee have its own web page? They don't, but we just created a website, and I think we just need to. Well, we did two years ago. Oh, okay. You know, we've got the new website that we can now previous web we couldn't edit, so this new one we can. So I think it's just a matter of us coming up and saying, here's how we like it structured, and then with this new Google Doc, I don't know if that would be something that would be different related, but we'll figure out the pieces. But certainly on the web, we should have all of the pieces for people to be able to look up yeah, the, the final product. It does already have a website. Pretty and active. And uh, Google Docs that we're kind of constantly throwing things into. So I'm not sure how, I believe it's publicly viewable. Everything that we have on there should be publicly viewable. So well, it seems like the committee would have to bring us a draft. Uh, and this, we discuss it here. And then invite the committee people to come in. I think ultimately, yes, but maybe they want some involvement before then. Well, like we did with the. Uh, we we just got on the same page and showed interest in what they're doing and why. Uh, let them do their work for a while. I think that works for each committee. They probably don't understand the process of developing a plan very well. Just the whole public give and take and running it through the city council and why brevity is important. I think it needs to be a give and take. If you're going to be responsible for writing it, I don't want to have to sit there and read a lot of documents on a web page by myself with no feedback from other people. Frankly, I'm not going to do it. So you're talking about discussing it. I would read it, and if I was going to come to a meeting or somebody would stop me and then ask me, what do you think about this? I'd at least like to say I've read it. <laughs> Well, I think if we I think if we had the goals, policies, and recommendations, it'd be either a consultant or the staff that would put together those six page, yeah. five page. So what's our housing element? Well, now that we've all had the discussion on the goals, policies, and recommendations, and the committees had their discussion and they've had the public inputs, we'll pull something together and start to say, Okay, you know, can you go Kim, what do you what do you think? What do you guys all think about this for our housing chapter? Tell the story we're trying to tell. You know, is this inspirational for you know at least getting a majority of the public on board with why affordable housing is important for? Mike, since we've been in the Energy Committee, been working on this for a while, would it make sense to bring this in as a doc? You know, just our goals, uh, at some upper level to bring them in to the commission to talk about? As I don't know, I guess that's up to the to the planning commission if we want to start. Because if we were going to start with the, the housing, I mean, the energy committee is probably a close second for the amount of work that's been done on goals and policies. Well, I just want to make sure that that's the right direction or that the commission is in agreement with the direction. So it would not necessarily mean that it would be an in-depth dive. It would just be very... That's 
first figure out, do you have what you need to meet with the Housing Task Force? We will come back to Energy Committee. But we, we talked about a lot of things, a lot of concepts, and I want to make sure that we have a clear list. Yeah, I think, assembled. yeah, what I think we'd be working, what I, because they're going to be coming to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. and I'm really meeting with them to kind of invite them in. But I think what we're going to be, the direction of, I'm going to be telling them, if I understand you guys, is we're really going to be focusing not on that six or seven pages to start with. Mm -hmm. We're really going to be starting on the structured discussion of these goals, policies, and recommendations, and starting to make sure we, you know, and we already have them penciled out. We just have to continue the conversation on those. And to, to start to build on that and then to make this something that we can get into a Google Docs or some kind of way of being able to track them so we can start to get a process so we can all go and say, I like this process. I think this is going to work. And then once we've got a process that works, we can then start to bring this up to the other committees. But the housing committee gets to be our guinea pigs. Are you thinking, I guess I'm not clear whether you would want to send this chapter around the other committee before we send it to the public for engagement? folks think about that. Should we reach out to, should, should we ask the housing task force to reach out for public feedback on the goals before we circulate this? Or should we circulate it, have everybody be working on the goals and then they can all be reaching out to the public? Like well, every well, committee and every other committee? Or? Well, it sounds like we do, well, we would send one, we'd send one chapter to all of the committees as an example. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I, I just think. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say I, I don't think this is very readable, like but right. as a, as a public comment, they document to get to the public. So I didn't know if you want to ask them to do something kind of a template. But it seems like we, if we identify just the goals, which is you know sort of the higher level parts. Right. They've done a lot of the content. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know that we need you know. We've, want to start there, but if all of the committees could come up with goals, would that be a useful um, document? My concern is just trying to not get in too deep and having you know, transportation, housing, public community services, utilities, I mean, you have all these different ones. And if we start to go throw this out and start to go work on this, there's, we don't nearly have the staff there. To start to work with that many committees, which is even if we once we get done with housing, my next recommendation would be to say, okay, once we've got one, let's pick three chapters that we'll work on next, and we'll work with three committees over the next year to do energy, historic preservation, and transportation. Those are three that have been getting a lot of work. We've got a complete street plan. We've done a lot of work with energy, and we've got historic. More chapters, and after that, we can go back. I think historic's pretty busy right now. Yeah, well, they, we'd have to finish what we're, we'd have to finish housing. I mean, I think yeah. this is going to take time just to do this housing chapter. I wouldn't think we're done with housing by the end of the summer. I don't think this is going to be fast. I think when you, when you have committees that meet once a month, it's going to be. Can we send chapters to the city council? Yeah. No, but as a process. We could. Instead right. of giving them this huge document, say, so look, this is what we developed for housing, energy, transport, whatever. And just put it on the city council agenda for discussion and comment. Because that would get a lot of public uh, discussion and input. So it's one to look at. We'll see where, where the council goes. We, we had this that, you know, remember with the, with the zoning. Don't send us to zoning all, right. all at once at the end. Send it to us in pieces. So we <laughs> send it to them in pieces. They said, we can't possibly go and review right. this. We don't have the entire <laughs> thing. Yeah, and so we're just like, okay. So um, it, I think it'll be a little bit of that. Because so many pieces interact, <laughs> um, I think we can give them the housing to talk about the housing, but I think. Well, you must have talked to the 
prior counsel about how the plan would be developed. And I think we got a lot of new people and we better start that process again. It would be good to get their input into what their priorities are bigger picture where they'd like to go and maybe set some expectations on the process once they do get the plan. I'm not interested in another situation where, like with the zoning, they go ahead and have their entire separate you know, hearings and then write their own zoning. Um, their intention is to act like a second planning commission as well as the city council. Actually, I'm going to not ask them for their opinions until they've seen the whole work. Because their opinions are not going to be very informed. They won't be very deeply thought out with a group of much. So I think our idea is to give them some thinking and say, look, this is, we like your comments. We don't mind trying to. And I think we talked a little bit about this at the previous meeting, said um, one thing we had been waiting for as staff was for the new council to be seated and the new mayor to be seated just so we can see what their what their goals i mean they still have to come in and get introduced and get settled in um, but do they want do they have as a as a as a goal of the council to you know we need a new city plan and we need to get working on this and if that's if that's direction from them then that helps us to know that well this is something we should put the priority Council meets and says, "Look, we're about burned out on this planning stuff. You know, um, we want you focusing on a very specific. You know, we want the planning department working on complete streets and making more um, bike lanes and sidewalks. Well, that kind of takes my staff away from working on this, and we kind of have to adjust. We've kind of been meeting here the past couple of weeks because we don't have the council direction." But I think they're going to want to have us work on the master plan, the city plan. So it puts me in the shoulder every time no, I that's say that's all right. It. We can put quarters <laughs> in the middle right now. Well, um, working on so the, I'm pretty sure, especially with the housing plan, uh, everything I know about this council says they're interested in housing. So ultimately, we're going to need to have a housing plan that helps answer the questions that Ashley and Anne and Rosie. Donna, I mean, I don't know the new counselors, but I know those those four um, counselors and now mayor. Um, that's been a, an important thing for them. Some of them ran on that that as their platform. So, in terms of process, getting back to that, of uh, what we want to ask the committees for, um, do you think it will it would involve necessarily involve your staff if we just ask each of the committees to come up with their top six goals without any of the support information to that because i mean i know from a, from writing the energy plan it's really helpful for me to know what transportation said because then that influences one of our goals i i think we do need to be with as staff to be involved because we're not just kind of throwing things out for people to give us, you know, as, as we were just talking about, you know, we want to force them into these boxes of, you know, maintain, enhance, transform. We want them to start talking about things in a certain way um, because that that lays the foundation for us to then develop an implementation strategy to implement it. It's, it's not sure. using that. And I haven't met with them to kind of talk about this is what we're trying to do, this is how we're trying to frame our goals, this is how we kind of frame our... Well, I mean, if you're only strategies. operating on the goal level, you know, sort of the high level, and they you could send out some basic parameters for those committees that they haven't spoken about. Because this is how we, we see goals. Um, and they, you know, we'll all get it wrong anyway for a while. But it's it just would be really helpful, I think, to, to have an idea of, what are the six major goals that transportation has? I agree with that. I think that would be very helpful. They're not the ones I At least getting the ones through all the committees yeah. before coming back. It's, it may be two years before we come back, but we'll be. 
Right, right. We'll come back to you later, but at least we know, or then the two committees that are involved in, in an overlap could have something to talk about. Yeah, they can always refine their goals. Right, yeah. right. We could, you know. But at least we know generally what they're thinking about. What they're thinking about, yeah. Maybe encourage them to be less than six, because that would have us be have around like 85 goals for each chapter right. as well. Which one? If, if each chapter has six goals, we'll yeah. have three goals. Oh, we're getting yeah. down to six is tough. Maybe yeah. three goals. Six, no, six is really tough. We should tough. have three for the entire plan. Uh, <laughs> sorry. sorry, John. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think John's point is that if we want to achieve the goals, we have to be really critical with the ones that we include. But there Someone are... asks you on the street, what are you guys doing? What are your goals? You have 80 goals to explain. <laughs> no, we're not going to go down. Hey, hey we, if we're going down from today, what do we think? What do we have? 500? Yeah, right. That's a, it's a definite improvement, yeah. isn't it? So but one of the, we're not responsible for all of those goals. You know, it's it's just that they are, are forming this framework that that the other committees are working from. So each committee is not responsible. I thought this. I thought this. This template and, and a sort of intro discussion that that we're hoping to put together. I, I was under the assumption that we were going to send it to every committee now, even though there might be somebody that would speak more for a year. I, is there enough background for them to understand what, what we're sending? We might we met with some of the well, already. The, the template and the message about outreach and the message about support. The A, B, and C that we have on the agenda right now. I think. It Do we have a template to send out until? I mean, part of the reason we were doing the the housing chapter was so we could develop the template. Did we want to wait till we got through the housing to basically refine that template? I mean, I, that's not that much of a delay, right? A month, or, or no? You, oh, you're talking about the getting the entire chapter done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it'll be probably, like I said, I think knowing that they meet once a month and just this stuff routinely just takes longer than, you know, ah, it shouldn't take more than three months to get done with this, and every three months run, it takes six months, so. What if we Wait. just gave them a, a quick an element of it, though, instead of the whole thing? Yeah. One piece that's okay. done well. I just develop one, one aspiration, one goal, yeah. one set of implementation strategies that's for that, easy. knowing that you may have three or four of them. Or six. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm only interested in the six goals. I don't want every step of each one of those six six goals. Um, but well, no, but if, the template needs to have. One. No, eventually, yeah. Right, yeah. but that's the point. I think we're trying to we're trying to nail down how we're going to do this, and it sounds like a template that has the goal, the implementation, and the steps. Just one goal and the nailing that down and then saying as you develop your goals we think it's important to start engaging public outreach but we will we'll come back we'll come to you when we're ready talking about our outreach expectations and yeah. our expectations now is, is a big part of what we were going to do but also then if you're going to tell them that they have to that there's an outreach component here that they're, they're going to have to get staff support well, and that's why we would so probably. So we will want to give a lot of. of so I'm, we're saying wanted, down the road, yes. this is what we're expecting. Yes. yes. But right now, what would be helpful, maybe to all of the committees at once, would be a sense of what your committee thinks are your most important goals, even if they're not in the right format. I mean, we're, we'll probably get goals all over the place. Although, if you came up, you know, with one example with the aspiration goals and, and um, strategies. That might help them to get it in the right words. Another option could be to, to, to ask for some high level info like that and to send them a template's forthcoming. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. let them know that there's a format that we're going to offer them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe uh, we can put together some a form letter. The, the, basically the B and C from our agenda yeah. messaging side of it. Yeah, 
with an ask. Mike's busy writing, so they'll come up with the ask. So under, this is what we'd like you to send us. Under A would be what are our expectations from the committees. Um, perhaps what they you know, could provide to all of the committees. If they could provide you know, an overall goal, that would really be helpful. Because otherwise, we've, we've been operating in the dark. So some of our goals will no longer be appropriate. So I think Kirby and I will put together a, uh, a letter to send to the various communities and an outline for walking through our expectations of A, B, and C with the housing task force for the next meeting. We plan this discussion. Folks can comment on it at the beginning of the meeting. I don't think I'll be able to, I don't think it's realistic for me to send it out before the, for comments before the agenda, but I'll send it, try to get it on the agenda. All right. Um, item six, talk about the minutes from February 26th. I'm going to approve it. Second. One correction. If I would have been here by Skype. We were here. She's no. um, she was listed as present when she wasn't present. Yeah, we weren't present either. No, no. person no. or Skype no, I was phone. I was in bed, no, yeah. <laughs> Mike requested that I not come and share with the commission. Appreciate so. it. You missed you that much. Oh, no, just thought I was trying to wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. Any other updates in the minutes? Okay, all those in favor of the bill, so we have us in the way. All those opposed? Okay. Unanimously. Um, and then there's something else I was going to just mention. I can't remember what it is now. I'm sure I will. No, it was something separate from the, from the city plan discussion. Do you need approval of a grant request? <laughs> no, no, no approvals for grant requests. It was, it was more of an announcement. I can't remember what it was. So. Personnel changes? Well, we will have personnel changes. Um, in the in here? No, in not here. In the Zoning administrator. So, oh, yep, she's going to be going to Stowe. Oh, wow. She lives in Waterbury, so it's a great job. Yeah, it's a great job for her. So. What's she going to be doing? Disappointed. Uh, she will be the zoning director. So. So people who live in Morrisville work in Waterbury, who live in Waterbury work in Stowe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, I hope it's a yeah. promotion. We, we used to, we used to sadly watch where all the right. staff from the regional planning commission lived, and it was always funny to go and watch the fact that, like, when is she leaving? Here. Oh, yeah. When is she leaving? Uh, in April. So we've got a couple more weeks. So we'll be posting the position. So I'd like to record my thanks for the terrific work she's done and yeah. hope that this is a promotion well deserved. She's, she will be, she will be missed. She's uh, yeah. extremely talented. So knowledgeable about it. Yep. And she's running the historic preservation. So that's, that's making me nervous. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. So will How that else energy is going to be like Somebody will have to, one of us will have to be taking And that reminds me, that meeting is tomorrow, right? That meeting is tomorrow, yes. But there is also a meeting that I, I shared with you well, there's a party yeah. for departing politicians. That's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. For the Along mayor, with the, for the outgoing mayor um, and, the, and the city councilor. So I encourage folks to go if they're available. Yeah. Is tomorrow, I sent you an email. Yeah. 
I don't remember the names. Five o'clock. Was that it? Or no, there's another thing that you're thinking no. of? No. Okay. okay. Well, well, then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. It's not today for a week. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Yeah.